Well, good morning or good evening, everybody, depending on where you're coming from. We welcome you joining us today for our presentation. We're excited to share about uh, uh, BASIS Bilingual School Shenzhen and our presentation today. For our presentation, we're excited to have a number of individuals from the school uh, share their insights. Uh, today, we'll be uh, hearing from Jenny Pan, who is the head of school at BASIS Bilingual School Shenzhen. We'll also be joined by Mark Silty, who is one of the chief instructional officers with BASIS International Bilingual Schools. Michael Gonzalez, who is the head of lower primary. James Rock, who is the head of upper primary. We'll hear from one of our uh, new teachers, Eve Downing, and some of her experience as she's uh, joined with us here recently. Tom Cummings, who is uh, head, uh, vice head of upper school, as well as Wayne Butterworth, director of student activities. I'm Tim Smith, and I'm Vice President of Global Talent for BASIS International Schools, and we'll also be hearing from Tony Cagle, who is our international recruiter that works directly with um, our school here in uh, Shenzhen. So today in the presentation, we'll be touching specifically on BASIS Bilingual School Shenzhen, and as well as sharing some insights on BASIS International Schools overall as an organization. Uh, we'll follow up and discuss aspects of the benefits uh, package and some of the visa requirements as we do uh, bring individuals into China. Um, and then lastly, we'll have a Q&A session at the end. If you do have questions, please use the Q&A uh, functionality in the presentation, just down in the menu bar. You can go ahead and type your questions in there. We'll answer all the questions at the end and I look forward to hearing from you on any insights that you're curious of. So to get things started, um, it is my pleasure to be able to introduce Jenny. Uh, Jenny is the head of school at Basis Bilingual School. I've known Jenny for um, almost 10 years now as she was with us uh, in our schools in the United States and was a founding member of our first international school. So Jenny, thank you for joining us today. We're really excited to hear your insights and insights from your team. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you, team. It's uh, great to see the old friend on the screen, right? As you said, we have been working together for 10 years. Time flies by. Yeah. Okay. And good morning and good evening, everyone. And I am Jenny Pan, and I'm the head of school for the bilingual Shenzhen. And I'm happy here um, to introduce myself, the school, and also my team. Okay. So uh, as the team said, uh, uh, I have been working in this uh, organization, especially the basis China for 10 years. Um, actually, and in 2002, I went abroad, went to state to study abroad. So I attended the Arizona State University and uh, purchased my bachelor's degree and master's degrees in education. So, and then later on, I graduated with these degrees and studied like, uh, um, then I worked in the public schools and the private schools uh, over 10 years, then joined the um, basis in states. So 2015, the team sent me to the basis China. So <laughs> that's why I'm the founding teacher for the basis international school Shenzhen. I worked in that campus for seven years. Then last school year, I was transferred to the bilingual school. So right now I'm the head of school here, but actually my career growth in this organization is just that I was a math teacher, then I was the head of the primary, then I was a uh, vice head of the school, then I'm the head of school. So um, basis does give me uh, like a, um, a lot of trainings, uh, you know, the opportunity for, for my career over here, okay? So um, the, let me like introduce uh, the basis bilingual school. Um, basis bilingual school Shenzhen is the largest uh, school in basis network, okay? They are uh, about 1,800 students, uh, um, you know, across the, like pre-K-1 to um, grade 11. So next school year, we will have our senior. It's the first year we will have our senior. Then 2020, uh, 2025, uh, we will have our first graduate team. So we aim to like kind of expand the school with uh, over 1900 students uh, next to the school year. 
And uh, most of the students, uh, they are uh, like uh, Chinese, uh, but uh, English is not their first language, but they do have like a high English proficiency. And how we can like uh, maintain our basis uh, teaching quality on campus and how we do that? Because uh, we have very strong professional like a teaching team. So currently this school year, they are 280 like teachers uh, on campus and 50% of the teachers, they are experts. They come from the different backgrounds, they come from the different countries, but most of them, they do have over 10 years teaching experience before they join the basic bilingual school. Okay. So 140 experts, today you will meet some of them, just very small group. Okay. So you can see how professional they are and how strong they are in the teaching experience and what the wonderful like uh, uh, admin team you will meet on this campus. Okay. So and uh, as I said, this school is the largest school, so we covered from pre-K-1 to grade 11. So, we divided the schools into four different divisions. They are ECE covers from pre-K one to um, kinder, and um, lower primary covers grade one to three, upper primary covers grade four and five, then upper school covers grade six up. Okay, so in each divisions, they are the department chairs who are in charge of the, like, the subject teachers in the curriculum part and teaching part. Those department chairs work with the division admins closely uh, on, the, to, on the, all the different type of collaborations, how we can ensure the basis curriculum can deliver in the classroom, what kind of activities we can have for the students, how we can engage the students learning in the classroom, and what the like uh, career growth we can have on the individual teachers. So it is a very professional like collaborative team on this campus. And uh, um, the, you know, when I say this, it is on the word. So I would like all those admins and teachers introduce themselves and also our schools so you can see from their insight, from their experience, what is the basis bilingual school, Shenzhen. It's not just me, it's a whole team. So, okay, I'm going to pass my role to my best friend, Mr. Sauti, and he will introduce, uh, you know, this basis bilingual school from the C heart office, you know, the big version of that. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Sauti. Good day to you all. From wherever you're joining us, we're very pleased to have you here. My name is Mark Siltik, and I serve as a chief instructional officer for Basis International Schools here in China. A very grandiose title for a very simple idea. There's actually six of us chief instructional officers around the network. All of us have been heads of school around China and around the world. We have that experience. What we have happened to us is that we are now delegated to visit all of the basis schools, to do teacher observations, to meet with leadership, again, to see how the network can support teaching and learning for students, whether they're in bilingual schools or international schools. As I said, I've had a wonderful almost 30 year career. I started out in private independent schools in the United States. I served at the Lawrenceville School outside of Princeton, New Jersey as a teacher and a department head before moving into administration. I was in an Episcopal school in Florida. When I went into headships, I ran a British model school in Shanghai, an American model school in Saigon, and another American model school in Mexico City. And now I'm back in China at Shenzhen and thrilled to be working with BASIS. But let's move to the next slide to talk about the differences. You see, BASIS is a network. It's a network of schools. The schools are generally divided in two ways. One section are the bilingual schools. 
in the bilingual schools, our students generally, though not exclusively, hold local passports. Here in the bilingual schools, we teach the basis curriculum integrated with the Chinese national curriculum. Now, the reason behind that is quite singular. In many places around the world, the education ministry of the country needs to validate student studies if they're to enter the university in their home country. Students that graduate from basis bilingual schools have received a thoroughly grounded international education, but also a very strong national section of the curriculum. They're fluent absolutely in Chinese and can, if they so wish, attend tertiary studies here in China. Most, I'll tell you, will still go abroad for their studies. The international side are foreign passport holders. They will be, for example, students who come from families of multinational company parents who have been sent here to China, but many of them too are ethnically Chinese, but just happen to hold a passport from some other country. They follow the basis curriculum, but if you're wondering how are the differences in teaching between those schools, I have to suggest that they're not as great as you might think. You see, I have a lot of respect for the Chinese national curriculum, having worked with it in Shanghai and now here in the basis school. Like many of the great private independent liberal arts type schools around the world, the Chinese curriculum emphasizes foundational knowledge and understanding of its subject, but also seeks to support students in their social emotional growth. So whether you're at the bilingual schools or the international schools, we're basis. And it's very important that you understand the basis system, the basis curriculum to make sure it's a great next fit for you as you're searching around the world. So again, like I say, I welcome you. I'm new myself, excited to be here. I have visited many of the campuses around China. And let me just close with that before I turn it over to actually talk about here basis bilingual in Shenzhen. There are some wonderful positive attributes to working in a network of schools. You see, when you come to basis, you're part of the school you joined here, basis bilingual school in Shenzhen, but you're also part of a larger network so whether you're a fourth grade teacher teaching mathematics or you're an upper school teacher teaching American history or economics or English literature, you're not only working with colleagues at your school, but you're linked through roundtables with teachers of similar subjects and the same subject around the network. You'll collaborate, you'll share resources. We first meet very often at the Summer Institute. The Summer Institute is held each year. Experienced leaders, academic leaders and such from around the network and all new faculty join together in one of the basis schools. The pictures you're seeing right now on screen come from Chengdu. It was my first time to go there this summer, but we met, we collaborated, we began these partnerships and relationships which transcend your individual campus to the larger network. And while you may love Shenzhen as I do and stay for years and years, when you're ready to try perhaps another city, the network offers you that opportunity. Well, I'm gonna turn it over now to some people who are far more experienced with basis. They've been here longer, but they, I think, share the same enthusiasm for the school. So if we could go to the next slide, okay? And I'm going to introduce you to Michael Gonzalez. Good evening and good morning to all the viewers here today. My name is Michael James Gonzalez, and I am the head of lower primary here at the BASIS Bilingual School at Shenzhen. My role here as the head of lower primary is to provide a safe, comfortable, supportive learning environment for our students and our teachers. That's my main role. My job today here is just to explain a little bit about our culture, our community, and how we support teachers here, especially from my division. But a little bit of a background about myself. I started as a teacher working in rural Bangladesh. For those of you who are from the United States, I was a Peace Corps volunteer. 
that's where I developed the love and the passion for teaching, but not just for teaching. Having those experiences where you can connect with a different culture. That was the compass that has led me down my path where as I returned back to the States, I immediately went for my teaching credentials as a social studies and English teacher taught in the States, but found myself returning back to Bangladesh as both a teacher and an administrator, which started my career that has now lasted 16 years working overseas in countries such as Malaysia, Kuwait, Thailand, and now China. So lower primary, what does it look like? I want to emphasize to, to all of you today that it really is about a culture of collaborative learning and collaborative teaching. So I want to share with all of you today our co-teaching model. You might have heard this term before, but what does it actually mean for us here at BASIS and also in the lower primary? Here in the lower primary, we have expert expat teachers that come from all around the world to share their practices. In addition, we have expert teachers that come from China. They work together within one classroom, a collaborative unit, both in teaching and instruction and in planning. What we have found is that this model has paid massive dividends for our students. Not only are they getting all that instructional, all that content knowledge that you all bring, but they're also getting the additional cultural knowledge that comes from their home country. And we have seen this work for our students again and again and again. Beyond that though, it creates an opportunity for our expat teachers and our local teachers to connect on a different level, to work at a different level. And what you will find is that we have these teachers that come with such a strong experience and connection to Chinese culture and the basis network through their collaboration with their co-teacher. This is the community that we promote here of collaboration. Everything here is to help to build our students. In addition, as Ms. Pan talked about, we have further supports through our chairs network that help to support our teachers with content delivery and instruction. Complete with this co-teacher model and our chair model supporting with curriculum support, I feel, and I'm very proud of my division, that we provide a collaborative, supportive environment for teachers to grow their practice, to become great, not just teachers, but great co-teachers. While at the same time, understanding and learning more about themselves and how they fit in to the basis network and also Chinese culture. So I wanna thank all of you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about our school, uh, our lower primary and how we teach at the lower primary level. With that being said, I would love to turn it over to our head of upper primary, Mr. James Rock. Thank you, Michael. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is James Rock. This is my fifth year with uh, BASIS. Um, my wife and daughter, you can see from the slides there, are with me here in Shenzhen. Uh, in addition to being a manager with uh, BASIS, BBSE, I'm also a grade four teacher. Uh, so upper primary has six sections in grade four and five sections in grade five. We have almost 300 students and over 50 teachers. You can see from some of the pictures there. Um, my biased viewpoint says that it's one of the most important parts of development for a young adult. Students go from being very young students in uh, lower primary to getting ready for middle school where they uh, foster the critical thinking, they have that maturity, and they have the ability to really uh, focus in on the academics. Uh, it's a very exciting time for our students. It's exciting to be in the classroom with them. Uh, we also follow their traditional basis model of an LET-SET uh, 
a classroom arrangement. A local hire LET uh, is with the students all day long, works with general classroom management and an overall pastoral support of our students. Our subject area teachers, an expat teacher, will come in to the classroom to teach generally math, science, and English, because that is the area that they specialize in. Of course, it would be a different teacher for each of those subjects. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the basis students. As we've talked about earlier, parents send their children to a basis school based on a reputation for uh, getting students into the best universities in the world. And while academics are important, it's also important that we produce well-rounded, compassionate young adults that have the ethics uh, and uh, the values to succeed in life. It's just as important for us as a, uh, as a network. Um, one thing I like talking about is how people end up teaching in China. How did I get here? And what is happening that is making you consider a move to China? I taught in Baltimore County Public Schools for almost 15 years, exclusively in Title I schools. Uh, for over a decade, the system that I was with was struggling to support students, and it certainly was struggling to support teachers. So much so that it made me doubt my value as an educator. After getting my master's uh, degree from Johns Hopkins University, I started working with their program CTY or Center for Talented Youth. Children from all around the world would come and take summer classes with their peers. They were very highly gifted and talented students and they would uh, be with their peers for the first time. And after working with those students for a number of years, uh, I decided to follow my CTY students to their home countries because many of my students that would come to the program were from China. Uh, next slide, please. So I wanna talk a little bit about Shenzhen. Shenzhen is an incredible place to live. I've never lived in a cleaner or safer place. Uh, Shenzhen as a Silicon Valley of China, which is often referred to, is one of the wealthiest and certainly most progressive cities in China. It's second only to Hong Kong for having the most skyscrapers in the world. And you can see from some of the pictures there, the skyline is just beautiful. Our proximity to Hong Kong, access to world-class amenities and uh, the amazing travel that's available in Southeast China uh, really make it easy and a wonderful place to live here in Shenzhen. Many times at, people ask me what it's like to live in China. And I have to shrug my shoulders and say, I don't know. I live in Shenzhen. It's that different. It's that unique. So I'm going to now pass the screen over to Miss Eve Downing. She is one of our grade four math teachers uh, and she's going to give us the perspective of what it's like to be a new teacher here at BASIS. Thank you. Hello, hi. Uh, my name is Eve Downing and I am a grade four mathematics teacher that is brand new to BASIS Bilingual Shenzhen. And I moved over just about, it's even under three months now. Um, I can't believe that it is only three months because we have just had the best time making China our new home. Um, we moved over from New Zealand. And when I say we, I mean myself, my partner, Tim, who is also a new hire of Basis Bilingual. He is a middle school drama teacher. Alongside us two was my daughter who is two and my son who is one. We decided to make the move over from New Zealand. We love New Zealand, but we were ready for a new adventure. We had been at our school in New Zealand for over five years and we were just looking for something new. So we started looking around online for some overseas jobs um, and we came across Basis Bilingual, Shenzhen. Um, and now we've made it our home. Basis hired both of us um, and we've just really loved our time here so far. 
Um, we received so much support when we were trying to head over here. Um, we were assigned one of the HR team members and they just helped us through the whole process. They helped us with visa applications. When we arrived here, they came and picked us up from the airport. And I tell you, it was amazing to see a familiar face who we had connected with um, prior to moving here. They helped us with bank accounts, phone numbers, all of that big logistical, the logistical nightmares of moving countries. Um, so they made it really easy for us, which was just awesome. Um, another aspect when we first moved here was, like Mark said, the Summer Institute in Chengdu. It was just so fun to be able to meet some of the staff members that we would work alongside, some other staff members from other of the network schools, which was just brilliant. Um, and yeah, the other Chinese campuses, it was awesome to meet some of the members from those schools. When we moved over here, we decided to live on campus, which has just been the best decision for us. Um, having such young children, it was really nice to know that we could be so close and we've been able to feel like we can spend much more time with them, um, which has just been the best. We have loved moving to a big city. We're from a really small countryside town in New Zealand and the change has just been really cool. Um, we found so many things to do with our children, different um, amusement parks, we've gone on different hikes, we've just had the best of kind of every world in this city, it's really, really cool. Now the school is much bigger than we are used to, but we really love that, we love that we can collaborate with so many other teachers. My partner Tim, he, at our old school, he was the only dance and drama teacher. And so it's been really cool to come here, be able to have a team around us to collaborate and create these great learning experiences for our students. Lastly, I just wanted to touch on the staff community. The basis team has been so welcoming, so supportive. Um, we've met a huge number of people and made some really great friends already. Um, we honestly wouldn't change anything about our journey so far. We have loved the experiences, the development as teachers, and we just can't wait to continue our journey here at BASIS. I'd like to now pass over to Tom Cummins. Thank you, Eve. Um, good, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody here. Um, thank you again for joining us. Um, my name is Tom Cummins. Uh, I am the vice head of the, uh, the upper school division. Um, and um, my journey to, to BASIS has seen me, obviously, come from Ireland. Um, it has seen me work in Korea, the Middle East, and now here I am in China. I am a, uh, an English and history teacher by trade. Um, this year, I'm also teaching some speech and debate here in the, in the upper school. Um, and I started my, my life here at BASIS uh, as a Dean of Students um, back in 2021. Um, and I have progressed to the, the, the vice head position um, as of last year. And really, what does that mean? What is part of my role? Well, really, I'm here to facilitate the day-to-day the, uh, the -day running of the upper school. Um, this involves working closely with the upper school head, uh, coordinating, collaborating with uh, various different departments to ensure that both our students and our teachers are supported uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So just to give you a little bit of information about the, the upper school, um, the upper school is in its, its third year. Um, we currently have grades 6 through 11 in place, and we will have our first uh, graduating classes, as Ms. Pan uh, mentioned already, in the 2024-25 school year. This is a very, very exciting development for us all. And we are very much looking forward to, uh, to, to working with our students as they, as they graduate. Talking a little bit about our middle school and, and high school. So the, the goal at the middle school level is to provide our students, um, not only with the basics in each of their, their, their courses, but also to encourage them to take responsibility for their learning, um, to prepare them also for the rigors of high school. Um, we have quarterly benchmarks here at the school, uh, which are network wide. 
Um, and through these assessments, we can chart the progress of our students um, to see that they are ready for school, for high school, and in particular for our AP courses. Um, really, our goal here at school is to provide and to, to, to create, I guess, learners who are enthusiastic, they are inquisitive, and they are collaborative as well. In our high school, um, as I stated, we currently have grades at 9 through 11, um, and our focus is on pre-AP and our AP courses. We're in our second year of offering AP courses to our students. And as we build our catalog of uh, AP courses, there are opportunities for teachers really to make their mark here um, in relation to, uh, to AP. Our high school students are driven. Uh, they know what it takes to succeed. Um, they want to succeed. And really, we do everything in our power to, uh, to provide as much support as we can to facilitate that success. Have you heard collaboration mentioned repeatedly throughout our, our uh, talk here today? And collaboration really is key to success here at Basis Bilingual. Our new teachers um, will find a collaborative and supportive work environment here at the school, um, both at the subject level, uh, through our departmental chairs, and through the, uh, the grade level, through our, uh, our team, uh, team of deans. Um, our uh, part of my job really, I guess, is to support teachers as they grow. Uh, we do encourage our teachers to be reflective and in our conversations after observations and so on. Um, we, will we will talk about what we have seen and we will encourage, like I said, our teachers to be reflective. And we find that um, being reflective is something that helps our teachers to grow and, and develop uh, within their profession. Um, growth, obviously, is central to our philosophy here. And we nurture growth across our student body, both academically and socially. We host a number of different events throughout the school year. We have recently had a, um, a mid-autumn festival, and we also support our students and their involvement in our after-school activities program, uh, which we'll be spoken about a little bit more later. As I mentioned earlier, I started out as a as a dean here at the school, which meant that I, I got to know the students on a day-to-day -day basis very quickly. Um, I started out with our, with our previous grade sixes. They're now our grade eights. And for me, talking about growth, I've seen students who have developed, students who have matured um, into the type of learners that we want them to be. Not only the type of learners, but also the type of people. And really, I have seen grade eights this year, um, speaking to each other in the hallways, um, being positive, being supportive with, with each other as they as they uh, move towards benchmark assessments and so on. And this is something that we, we encourage, obviously. We also promote growth uh, for our staff, um, both from a professional perspective, but also socially. Um, we have a, a number of teacher-led fitness clubs here at the school, which attract um, uh, many of our staff members. And, and this allows people to, to bond with their colleagues and it creates that kind of community spirit um, that is essential in any successful school. Um, we offer a varied professional development um, a program as well across the school. And I know that uh, Mr. Wayne will talk a little bit more about that um, in the next few minutes. So again, I would like to thank you all for uh, taking the time out of the, your busy lives to, uh, to, uh, to, to be with us here today. Um, and I will pass over to uh, Mr. Wayne. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Tom, I appreciate it. Um, greetings from Shenzhen. Um, as mentioned, uh, my name is uh, Wayne Butterworth um, and my roles at the school are Athletics Director and Dean of Student uh, Activities here at Basis Bilingual School. Uh, I'm originally from uh, Wakefield, uh, but brought up as a, as a Halifax Town fan. Um, I've been in education for uh, 20 years, uh, 10 in international education, uh, including a stint in the Middle East and Qatar uh, before coming to China and Beijing uh, for five years. And this is my second year here at Basis Bilingual School, Shenzhen. I'm here with my uh, wife of 
11 years and she is from Turkey. Um, we love our time here in China uh, and I've just committed to another three, uh, which will take us to 10 years, 10 years in, in China. Uh, next slide, please. So within my roles of Dean of Student Activities and Athletics Director, my responsibility is to try and create an inclusive, vibrant and enjoyable extracurricular and enrichment program for our learners from ECE to high school. Uh, and I hope I can give you a flavor of this over the next couple of minutes. Uh, and I will also touch on our professional development setup at the school. I'll start off with our, our sports program. Uh, so this academic year, we have uh, 20 uh, sports teams, including nine uh, teams entered into the local international schools league. Uh, and these teams uh, compete against other local schools in the area in four core sports, basketball, football, volleyball, and badminton. Uh, together with these uh, four core sports, we also have competitive teams in cricket, netball, tennis, uh, swimming, table tennis, and rugby. And many of our teams are coached by members of staff outside the PE department who have a background in sport or just a keen interest in sport. So there's plenty of opportunities for everybody to get involved. Uh, running alongside our sports program is our after-school activities program, uh, which for semester one, we have over 90 clubs. And many staff have uh, designed these clubs uh, based around their uh, personal interests uh, or talents. Uh, and some of these clubs include uh, baking, uh, languages, uh, calligraphy, uh, game design, knitting, and environmental clubs, just to name a few. Uh, we also have uh, opportunities for staff to get involved in our uh, flagship club program. Uh, this includes the Duke of Edinburgh Award, the World Scholars Cup, uh, Model United Nations, and Speech and Debate. Uh, the latter, uh, we just hosted last week, uh, a network competition for 350 basic students uh, from several basic students in the network. Um, other events uh, this, this calendar year have included uh, Earth Day, uh, Children's Day, talent shows, uh, charity fairs, kindness day, photography and art, sports invitations, uh, invitational, sorry, and award ceremonies, just to mention a few. Uh, looking ahead, uh, we look forward to further speech and debate competitions, uh, Shakespeare performances, performing arts, and further sports competitions. So there's plenty going on and plenty to get involved in. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the next two slides uh, showcase our uh, fantastic campus, uh, which includes a uh, swimming pool, as you can see, a football field, an uh, indoor gym. Uh, next slide, please. Outdoor gym, um, 500 seat uh, theater, uh, black box theater, uh, a running track, and state-of-the-art classrooms. Next slide, please. Uh, touching briefly on our uh, professional development program here at Basis Bilingual, uh, as mentioned, this starts off with our Summer Institute and several inset days at the start of the academic year. Uh, through our weekly divisional uh, collaboration time, uh, staff are provided with uh, regular professional development opportunities uh, this is further supported by two full PD days uh, during the academic year. Uh, in addition to uh, internal PD, uh, external uh, professional development is also available to staff uh, and includes platforms such as Tess Educare. Uh, but whether it be uh, PD uh, or enrichment uh, or any aspect of the school my uh, colleagues have spoken about today, our recently uh, formed Tigers qualities and values of teamwork, integrity, goal-driven, excellence, resilience, and service is at the forefront of everything we do here at the school and makes for a real sense uh, of community here at Basis Bilingual School Shenzhen. And I look forward to meeting you all soon. Uh, thank you, and I will pass it back 
uh, to Mr. Tim Smith. Great. Well, we do appreciate everybody for sharing such great insights into the school, the different divisions of the school, so many activities happening, and uh, appreciate the, uh, the input. And uh, Eve, thank you for sharing your personal experience of uh, coming and joining us this year. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the aspects of working with uh, basic international schools, uh, uh, basic international and bilingual schools overall, um, as a larger network. So BASIS is a part of a broader network. It's the BASIS Curriculum Schools, which includes 13 uh, international bilingual schools, including two that we are opening uh, in Shenzhen this next year. It also includes the BASIS Independent Schools based in the United States uh, as part of the, uh, the BASIS Curriculum Schools. Something that um, people ask about is in terms of the BASIS Curriculum in and of itself. Um, the BASIS Curriculum is something that we've developed um, uh, over the course of the last 26 years. Uh, BASIS has always wanted to educate students at the highest international levels. We've taken components of various curricula around the world to identify what makes sense for us in terms of us delivering uh, highest quality education. Um, we kind of describe our curriculum as a, an AP infused liberal arts curriculum, um, where in the high school grades, we do have AP courses. We also go beyond the AP courses to post AP courses or capstones. In the middle school, it's a, a liberal arts curriculum um, incorporating core components of math and science, languages, literature, social sciences, and so forth. And then uh, the primary model is set up unique where it's a co-teaching model to really support both um, instructional excellence and providing great subject-driven uh, uh, classes, uh, as well as uh, the needed support. We have learning enhancement teachers that work directly with the students so that the individual needs of the students are met as well. We have a play-based uh, learning uh, curriculum in uh, the early childhood educational uh, division as well, which is uh, you know pre-K up through uh, kindergarten. It is an accelerated program. Something that um, uh, we're pretty well known for is uh, is you know the advanced level that we do teach in, and something to be aware of in coming in that it, you would be teaching in a more accelerated curriculum. So there's things in terms of the content that is taught at a little bit higher level. The pacing can be a little bit more um, uh, quick than what some people may be uh, accustomed to. So something that uh, you want to be aware of and considering an opportunity with BASIS International Bilingual Schools. Something else that is very unique is that we do have a partnership with UC Berkeley and um, we do teach Berkeley credited courses at our, our schools as well. A program that will be, I believe, added to BASIS Bilingual Schools Shenzhen in the coming years. In terms of what that then results in is just some outstanding results. We have over 60% of our graduates are accepted into top 30 universities. Over 90% of our students get into top 50 universities around the world. Uh, a lot of those universities include um, excellent uh, organizations and institutions such as you know, Cornell, Duke, Harvard, Imperial College of London, MIT, UCLA, Oxford, University of Toronto. We also have students going to exceptional um, arts schools like the Rhode Island School of Design, um, among others as well. Um, the students are really able to, um, uh, for the most part, have their, their first choice of school that they do attend. And uh, it, it's uh, been a great opportunity for the students to be able to um, seek out greater future opportunities in their education, as well as future career prospects beyond that. Something that is also very unique in uh, the support that you do receive is that we have world-class HR support. Everything starts from the visa assistant. You're supported all along the way in terms of the documents that you need, uh, the steps that will be coming up um, for both you and your accompanying family. The logistics are very well taken care of in terms of uh, flights, also helping you with uh, moving assistance. Um, the insights and information provided to the HR team is uh, just exceptional. Housing is arranged and set up for you. Um, schools have even you know, provided welcome packets to the teachers. Um, it's something that really stands out in terms of the care that is provided for our teachers is just exceptional. Uh, we really do want to set you up for success. As a teacher, you will know that you're appreciated, that you're valued, you're a critical piece of our schools, and um, teachers being able to create the right experience for the students is, is really what we're all about. So we do take care of our teachers at um, almost a, an unmatched level, and you can, um, you, you can anticipate being well taken care of and considering a transition to working with us in China. 
With that, I will turn things over to Tony Cagle. So Tony is the uh, international recruiter that works specifically with uh, Basis Bilingual School, Shenzhen. So Tony, we look forward to hearing uh, some of your insights. Welcome, everybody. We are excited to share with you about our school. It was lovely hearing from everybody from the team, and I hope you are enjoying this webinar as much as I am. So today I want to just chat with you about why teachers come to us. Why? What are teachers saying when they're excited about teaching about basic international bilingual schools? One of the things that you have heard repeatedly tonight is BASIS provides a very collaborative learning environment. And this is especially true at our bilingual school because it is that really large school. So you get to work with amazing teachers who are passionate about what they are doing um, work with them on a daily basis, but because we are a great network, as you've heard, you get to talk with other teachers from other schools as well. So it's a really great way to collaborate with teachers from all over the world. We have a very high academic culture. We expect high standards from our students as our teachers as well. Uh, again, our basic network, basis network is, you know, we have eight schools this year and are excited to continue to grow. So as our network grows, our ability to collaborate will grow even more full. And of course, our basis students. So many people I talk to who are moving to China just love the students that are at our schools. They really are students who are excited to be there, passionate as the teachers are. So it's really a nice, refreshing aspect to work with students who are just so excited to be at school. Now let's talk a little bit about China. As you've heard, our school in Shenzhen is a very modern city. And with that comes a lot of conveniences. It's really easy to have almost anything that you would need delivered straight to your home. There is a lot of technology, especially in Shenzhen being the tech hub of China, so that you go easily to a store and purchase almost anything that you need for fairly, fairly cheap prices. Education is valued. So families in China are really excited about education. The best Going back to those students again, they're just excited to come to school. And really, they honor their teachers in a way that it is just so touching. And if you are, you know, have that a bit of adventure in you and you are wanting to experience a new culture, China is a great culture. There's this, a great mix of history as well as new vibrant cities that are being built. So you can find almost anything that you're looking for as far as culture goes and the cost of living. Not only do we offer a great package, but it's in a location where the cost of living is really affordable. So there's lots of opportunities for you to, to earn and save some money if that's something of interest to you. Let's talk a little bit about our expat package. Well, if you are hired on with basis, we will cover your travel benefits. So we're going to pay for your airfare for you and your dependents to come over. We're going to help you with the visa support. And in addition to that, every year you're going to get an allowance so that you can go home and travel your with to see your family. We provide health and tuition. So you will get a tuition reimbursement for up to two children. If you come over as a teaching couple and both of you and your spouse are teachers at basis, then you can enroll up to three children free of tuition. They will provide you with global health coverage, which is wonderful coverage that you can use while in China or while traveling abroad. And that coverage includes access to you uh, English speaking clinics and hospitals. So there's really great coverage. As Tim mentioned, we provide housing for you. So it's usually furnished housing on or near campus. As uh, mentioned during our webinar, we have some great housing that's right on campus. So if you are wanting something really close, it's really easy and accessible to just run home really quickly. We also, if you are somebody who lives in China, especially in Shenzhen, we get a lot of teachers who come who are already living in the area, you can get a housing stipend and put towards your housing that you already have. In addition to all those great things, we have some retirement bonuses. You get a 10% annual retirement benefit, which is just a 10% check you get at the end of the school year, and you can put that towards retirement of any choice. There's a completion bonus when you finish your contract, and throughout the year, there are some additional bonuses to really look forward to. All right, what are some things that we look for in a basis teacher? One thing is subject mastery. Uh, and with that comes, do you have a degree in your teaching subjects? So typically our math teachers have degrees in mathematics. Our physics teachers have gone to school and have degrees in physics. Our elementary teachers have 
degrees in elementary education. So we look for teachers who are really masters of their area. High academic standards. Well, we have set really high standards for our students and we expect the same from our teachers. So we are looking for teachers who can uphold that. You'll see here, we're looking for a minimum of two years full-time teaching experience. But as Ms. Pan mentioned earlier, many of our teachers have much more. And she was said that there are usually about, they have about 10 years experience before even coming to basis. And that goes back to that subject mastery. Are you really an expert in the area you've been teaching? So have you been teaching you know, mathematics for 10 years? Willingness to work hard. Our teachers work very hard at basis, just like they do at any school, but it is, you know, even more so at basis. So be prepared for that. A passion for teaching. We look for people who are excited about what they do every day and get the students excited about that. So we want to instill that love of learning in our students. And so that goes to that passion and, and getting teachers who can help with that. Ability to engage young minds. Again, it goes to that passion piece and getting teachers who are just excited and can really engage with the students. Uh, collaboration, you have seen that come up time and time again. It is a really a cornerstone of BASIS and really working together. What does it look like working for BASIS International Schools? As mentioned before, most of our students are going to be local students. And so you will be working with students who are you know, local to the area in China and um, you know, are really excited about coming to bases, but most likely looking to eventually move abroad for university. Most of our students are learning English as a second language, so do be prepared for that. As many students coming in are going to have a little bit of a language barrier that we are going to be working on. Flexibility is important at any of our schools. We are really looking for teachers who can come in and be flexible and adaptable as educators. You know, that is the number one thing that we many times look for. As you you all know that every given day can be something different, no matter how well you plan, things always come up and we have to be flexible. And any children that you be bring, that you will be bringing with you, please be ready that they do need to be ready for a basis education. As you've heard throughout tonight's call is that many, our curriculum is quite rigorous. With that, if you are bringing children with you and you plan to enroll them in BASIS, they do need to be prepared for that rigor and that high quality education. And so we want to make sure any student coming in, whether they are a student that's local to the area or a child of a teacher, that they are going to be successful with the curriculum. And if you want more insights, we have plenty of areas for you to visit. We have a wonderful career site that we keep updated with all of our incoming and opening positions. We have a great blog where you can read about teachers' current experiences with BASIS and what our teachers are up to and what's happening in our classrooms. You'll also find a great host letter from Ms. Pan telling you a little bit more about her school. And there's an opportunity to join our talent community so you can find out about what is new and happening with BASIS. With that, Tim, I'm going to turn it back over to you. So at this point, um, we have reached the Q&A portion. So we'll go ahead and uh, bring the uh, Basis of Bangladesh School Shenzhen team back in. And it looks like we do have a few questions that have come in from participants. Uh, Tony, I think you're kind of tracking some of those questions. If you want to uh, maybe kind of start from the top and uh, go through the questions, we'll uh, identify who the, uh, the best person is to fill whichever question comes up. Perfect. Our first question is, how long is the teaching contract for? Uh, that one's pretty simple. Uh, typically, we start off with a, a three-year contract. Uh, individuals can renew contracts for another three years. Um, there's also options to review, uh, renew for you know one or two years uh, after the initial uh, after the initial contract. But typically, we start with three-year contracts. Excellent. Our next question is a recruiting question. When do you usually respond to applications? Typically, our team is pretty quickly about going through applications, so you can expect a response within a, a few days. I would say, um, if you're selected to move on. We do have a lot of applications coming through, um, so it's something to be aware of. Our next question, what is the workload for a teacher and how many classes should they expect to teach in a given week? Tim, you want me to answer this question? Yeah, <laughs> that, that would be great. I, I, I saw you, uh, you know, coming back in, so uh, we'll let you fill that question. Thanks, Jenny. Okay, generally we have, uh, we schedule the teachers with a four, like a teaching period like per day and uh, each period with uh, 45 minutes, okay? And the maximum that the preparation time is kind of two preps. 
So that's general days. Besides that, the teachers may take a little bit on the different duties, such as the recess duty or some other morning duties, something like that. So that's kind of a schedule we usually give to the teachers. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Our next question, knowing that BASIS has an AP infused curriculum, um, what are teachers that have experience in IB, British, or other types of curriculum experiences adjusting to basis? I would suggest this. As I, as I said earlier, I worked in schools that were completely IB, that had mixed programs and such. Uh, if you're not familiar with the American AP program, I would describe it in this way. The American AP program is intended to be a college level study, the equivalent to what you might get in the first year of that subject, whether it's Psychology, now it's what you would do in Psych 101 uh, in college or in American history or such. And what that means is that anyone with a disciplinary knowledge of their field can teach the APs. Um, it is a little more difficult, I would argue, to go the other way. If you're perhaps US trained and you want to teach the IB, the IB being based off of a British model, uh, of, uh, of, of studies, it's a little more difficult, but for the AP, if you're a discipline, if you're passionate about your discipline, uh, you can be a great AP teacher. Excellent, thank you. This first question goes a little bit back to a previous question that we have. It's a little more specific about teaching hours. So what are teaching hours? I think they're trying to kind of get a gauge. What, what time will we be showing up for the day? How late should they plan to be there for the day? Oh yeah, okay. Our class uh, like uh, start from the eight a.m. and ends around the three thirty. It depends on the which division because generally, like a uh, uh, high school has electives, so may end a little bit late and four fifteen, like uh, around that time. And uh, uh, we do like uh, like the teacher to come to school like uh, uh, before the seven thirty, so they can get the start of the day, prepare for the materials, prepare the. For the lessons they need, the, typically the day, the teaching hours start from 8 to the 3.30. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Next question. What type of ELL support is available for students? And what is the typical English ability of incoming students? That's a good question. As we said, uh, the students' population is uh, here. It's kind of for they are not the native speakers. And uh, but basis has a rigorous curriculum which uh, high standard uh, requirement on the students. So from early age, for example, from pre K two, we start teaching students phonics. So once they get the grade one, they should have the, like uh, levels of the students' proficiency. And also on campus, uh, um, this school year we our EL department has fourteen teachers with in the different divisions they kind of focus on the students kind of a little bit need extra support so they can do the push in and pull out and focus on the students the foundations and try to help them you know um, build like the like English proficiency mm -hmm. level to uh, ensure they can catch up the basic curriculum. Yeah, and I, I would simply I would simply add this. Certainly, if you look at our early childhood classes, the very lower primary grades, uh, you're going to see significant language development. But because we are uh, based with English language as our means of instruction in all classes except those in Chinese, the progress is very rapid. That is to say, by the time you're teaching in third grade, fourth grade, and beyond you're gonna be holding very similar discussions to the levels you're holding in your own country, whether you come from the UK or Canada, the United States or New Zealand or Austria, uh, Australia or any of the other countries. What is gonna be added is the perspective. It's the cultural perspective that will enrich those discussions. So yes, certainly by the time you get into middle school and high school, it's looking like a classroom still with needs of support, still with language learning, uh, but you're going to be teaching at a level uh, that uh, you're familiar with. 
And uh, also, I just want to share the personal like uh, experience. Yesterday, I was observing the AP language class, and after that class, I talked with the AP language teachers, and she shared with me. She said actually, this year the eleventh uh, class students in her class, and she told me those close those students like English levels much much better than what she had in the States. And also their thinking skills and their independent abilities mm -hmm. is above their ages. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a basis of students, you know, uh, in the world and also in the basis bilingual change as well. Thanks so much for that input. Um, Tony, uh, is there any other questions or I think, are we covered everything at this point? I think we have covered everything. We answered a few in the chat, so we are good to move on. Great. Well, again, Jenny, Mark, thank you so much for uh, for joining, providing your insights. Uh, you know, we, we've loved hearing from the team. You have a really great team and uh, uh, love visiting your school. It's great to see you there last week and I uh, look, look forward to visiting again. Um, I'm going to just uh, move back for those individuals that, again, want to connect with more insights. We have a lot of, uh, of stories from our teachers, insights on our schools, on our blog. Please feel free to um, you know take, take a look at what some of our teachers have shared there uh, relative to their experience. You can also uh, join us on social. You'll see uh, more insights of you know some, some pictures and some videos of what's happening at the schools and um, you get some additional insights. So thank you for joining us today. And uh, Jenny, again, thank you to, uh, to you and your team. And I look forward to uh, lots of wonderful individuals uh, inquiring about opportunities with Basis Bilingual School Shenzhen. Thank you, team. Thank you, Tony. And thanks to everyone to attend uh, you know, this webinar, give us the opportunity to, to introduce our bilingual school in Shenzhen. <laughs>